hi, and I'm another version of you. And that is the phrase that I like to start the show with, and this is The Waking Universe. And we are here with the author of I Am the Word, Mr. Paul Selig. Paul is a academic, a well-known playwright, and he is what is called a conscious channeler. And uh, that makes the very interesting story of how this book was written. Uh, Paul, um, we are very honored to have you in the studio here today. I know you're only in, in town for a short while, and I thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for yeah, having me. It's really pl a pleasure to have you here. Um, so tell me about uh, I Am the Word. I heard that this book was written in two weeks. It was dictated over the course of two weeks. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not really the author of the book. My name's, you know, on the cover, mm -hmm. but I was the medium for the book. The book was really dictated over a period of, you know, two weeks worth of sessions or sittings. Um, I was sitting in my living room in New York with a CD recorder on play and a woman named Victoria Nelson was in Berkeley on the other end of the phone and the whole book was actually, it's a verbal dictation mm -hmm. of channeling sessions and the book is an unedited transcript of those sessions. So I'm, I'm the medium of the book, I'm not really the author of the book. Mm -hmm. I always find it interesting when people say that they, they channel material because uh -huh. um, myself as an artist, you know, I, sometimes you will do stuff and you'll be like, whoa, where did the last eight hours go and I just yeah. created this and where did it come from? Uh -huh. And it's something that you hear artists talk about again and again and again. You know, in my opinion, everybody channels. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that we inherently do. Mm -hmm. um, how did you come into that process, uh, you know, and, and what was that like for you? Well, it wasn't intentional. Uh, I'll tell you that much. You know, in the, gosh, the early 90s, I was studying a form of energy healing. Mm -hmm. And I found that when I had my hands on people, I began to hear things for them. Um, so if I had my hand on your heart and I heard the name Jeff and I wasn't thinking about a Jeff, I learned to say, who's Jeff? And you'd say my father, my dog, my son, my lover, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was really through a process of, of being validated again and again and again through what I was hearing that I began to trust it. Mm -hmm. And around that time, I began to sit with a group um, and bring energy through. And I was very, very interested in the energy that was coming through because it was very, very palpable to me. Mm -hmm. And because I was raised something of an atheist, um, I needed to have an experience that I could sort of touch, feel, taste, and I was feeling energy, and I was beginning to hear things. And I sat in a group for a while, and gradually what happened over really a long period of time as the transmission became clear or the radio station mm -hmm. um, became more refined. In a lot of ways, I'm the radio. Mm -hmm. You know, my system is used. I take the dictation. Um, but initially, I was hearing in fragments, and it really wasn't until maybe four years ago and I was doing a group in New York, and my guides turned to one of the people in my group, and they said, you know, Paul's not gonna believe the stuff that's coming through him until he sees it written down, mm -hmm. that I began to transcribe the lectures. Mm -hmm. I didn't even like to record the lectures initially because I'm, I'm a conscious channel, and I have this odd thing in that I whisper mm -hmm. as the information's coming and then repeat in a louder voice, so it's not the most graceful way mm -hmm. to receive information. I found it kind of weird to listen to, and I didn't want to hear it, but I knew there was some interesting stuff happening, but once I began to to transcribe, I saw that what was coming through me were, you know, the first the first thing I transcribed was a five-page lecture that required absolutely no editing, and it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was a writer with the worst writer's block of anybody I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. So five pages and no editing, I was sort of fascinated. And for, I, got, I became addicted to sort of typing these things up every mm -hmm. week. Well, what I notice is that the, uh, I'm a writer, uh -huh. and, and uh, this interests me personally because I get writer's block. Yeah. You know, I'll go for weeks and be like, I haven't written anything, I don't know, you know, what do I do? Yeah. And it, what I notice about this book is that the, the, the clarity of it, yeah. and, and uh, you know, it is exceedingly uh, to the point. And, uh, and maybe we should talk a little bit about what this book is, because uh, you know, this, this book is about basically finding your own personal power to me. Mm -hmm. And, and to me, that's interesting. And, and uh, um, it resonated. I mean, there was, there was times I'm reading this book and I'm going, yeah, that's, that makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's something that you would think is just so obvious, but, but it's not. And it, but it just comes through in one clear, concise piece, mm -hmm. which um, a lot of books on of similar subjects you know, tend to be very verbose and very um, all over the place. This yeah. book wasn't. Um, do you sit there and read it and go, um, wow, you know, I did pretty good. You know, this, this, 
Where did this come from, and, and do you actually learn from this? Are you a student of the book? I am a student of the book. I'm not the teacher of the book. I mean, I apply the teachings you know, that my guides have given as best I can. I don't think I'm the best student that they have. There are people that are really working with this material. They're, then their lives are transforming, I mean, radically. And mine has, too, to be mm -hmm. honest. I'd be lying if I, if I were to say that it hasn't. How many years ago did you write this? I didn't write it again. I dictated. dictated I took it. the dictation. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I spoke it into a CD recorder and mm -hmm. then typed it. I mean, mm -hmm. that was really my. It took it took longer to type the transcripts than it did to take the dictation. Mm -hmm. Uh, 2009, mm -hmm. I think, is when this was dictated. And how has your life changed since? Oh my God. Well, I'm doing the work. Mm -hmm. You know, I came out. You know, with this work. I mean, I've had a, a very healthy career as an academic for a long time, and I kept my my metaphysical life somewhat separate, and I mm -hmm. thought that it would be ridiculed or could be. And, you know, I mean, in some ways I was sort of out because I work in the arts and people, you know, you're allowed to be, you know, a little off center. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't very public with this, and the book forced me to become public. I, I lost 130 pounds. Mm -hmm. I'm living a very different life. There's a lot more joy. And honestly, I'm, I'm practicing some of the really basic stuff that my guides teach, which is not making decisions based in fear, you know, honoring the divine in others. I mean, there are really basic things in here that, are, that can be life-changing, or they are for me. Am I the best student of the work? Not necessarily, because, you know, I, like most of us, I think, get kind of attached to my stuff, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, my guides say that we're radios, and it's mm -hmm. really up to us what station we play, mm -hmm. what our broadcast is, and our broadcast is our vibration, it's our consciousness. So if I want to be low, I can be low, but the guides and the book, you know, show me that I can switch it, I can change channels. So let's talk a little bit about the, the, that process. I mean, a lot of the times um, on this show, we talk about the idea of uh, everything vibrates. There's a vibrational yeah. frequency to everything. Uh -huh. um, that's a scientific thing. It's not yeah. just a, a spiritual woo-woo thing. Mm -hmm. you, you talk about like, you know, your frequency and uh -huh. like, you know, raising your frequency, bringing it up. Like, what does that really mean to you? I, I only know what it means to me experientially. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not a scientist and I'm not the author. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're asking, it's kind of like asking the radio mm -hmm. what music it's playing. Right, it's right, what's right. coming through me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can translate what it means to me. Mm -hmm. I can talk about my experience of it. I can let the guides try to talk if they want to come through. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, what my guides say again and again is you are who you say you are. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is what they've been teaching a lot recently. You know, you are who you say you are. And what you say you are creates a vibration mm -hmm. that moves you into accord with like vibration. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what the science is of this stuff. I'd like to know. I know for a fact because, you know, the other work that I do is empathic work and mm -hmm. I have this odd ability, you know, to step into other people. So if you say, what's going on with my cousin Jim and I step into cousin Jim, I'll start to look like cousin Jim. I'll take on his personality and mannerism and I'll tell you what I hear. Mm -hmm. I know that there's a science to what I do here. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't understand it. There are others that do. So, you know, the idea of frequency and resonance, I get it. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I get it as a soft science and in a mushy way, mm -hmm. I think, but I don't think that that's what it is. It's something very distinct. When my guides work with energy, and the guides actually say that the book is in itself an energy transmission. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of times, um, you know, you hear throughout the ages that words have power. Yeah, like the yeah, Egyptians yeah. believed that, you know, the Hebrews believed that in the Bible and the, in the, the Quran, they believe that, you uh -huh. know, it's like, and it's, and it's true. You read something and it sparks something in you, yeah. you know, and, and it's like in, in, in me reading this book uh, and, and, you know, I didn't tell the story of how I actually got this book. I mean, I, it was, it was uh, the last day that the Bodhi tree closed, yeah. you know, and uh, it was the last book sitting on the shelf and I happened to be standing in line and I grabbed this kind of book just because it looked lonely on the shelf and I liked the title, you know, and I said, you know, wow, what's this? And it was like, uh, you know, marked it down because everything was in the store. I bought it, and out of the probably 15 books that I got that day, I think it's the only one that I've actually read and mm -hmm. read all the way through. Mm -hmm. you, you talk about in the book that times are changing. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, there's a lot of people out there right now that say the world is changing, we're going through a shift, there's all of these things happening. Um, let's talk about that. What do your guides say about that in the book? Like, what's happening right now to people in the world? They call it a reckoning. I mean, mm -hmm. they say, you know, we're really at a time in our own history where we're being asked to face our own creations. And our creations is everything that we see around us, what we've chosen. Mm -hmm. And they asked us to be accountable on why we choose what we choose, because what we choose is what we get. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And if we don't like what we're getting around us, we actually have the ability and the opportunity to change things. But if we don't, we're setting ourselves up for whatever, you mm -hmm. know, whatever the result is of making a lot of choices in fear. I mean, what the guides have said again and again and again is that when you make a choice in fear, you create more fear. Mm -hmm. And they, they've said this to me a, a lot, and it's mm -hmm. one of the things I'm pretty good at now, you know, but they say if you look back at your own life, at every choice you've ever made because you were afraid, look at what you've reaped mm -hmm. from that, and it's more fear. You so set something in motion. So the person sitting at home mm -hmm. and watching this, and they've lost their job, they don't yeah, have yeah, yeah. Uh, something, someone has a disease or whatever. Uh -huh. Uh, you saying, well, you can change that. How do they change it? What well, are they I'm not saying that they can change this, and mm -hmm. I'm not speaking to that. I'm mm -hmm. talking, I think when the guides are talking about transformation, I'm not saying that they're not talking about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that I got into this work myself at the height of the AIDS epidemic when mm -hmm. my friends were getting sick, and it's one of the reasons that I studied energy healing, mm -hmm. and it was something that I could do. And I didn't really embrace this work until other parts of my life were falling apart. Mm -hmm. So I think that anything is potentially a great opportunity to transform. There are larger questions here, I think, that have to do with moving beyond attachment to the physical realm mm -hmm. when you get caught up in that. I mean, if I think I'm my job and I lose my job, who am I? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that people don't need to eat. I mean, I'm not at all being that crass mm -hmm. and I've been as broke as the next guy, mm -hmm. you know, at different times in my life. So it's not about that. But it is about, I think, what we choose and how we choose it. Mm -hmm. And I do think that if we begin to take responsibility, I'm not just speaking individually here, I'm speaking collectively for our creations. I mean, the belief that we are so different from the person down the road for us or in the next country or whatever is a wonderful opportunity to create separation. Mm -hmm. And the message of my guides, frankly, is that we're not separate. I mean, it's really very basic. I mean, the Word, which is their work, mm -hmm. you know, they say, I am the Word, and they say the Word is the aspect of the Creator mm -hmm. that can be manifested in form, is instilled in everybody. Mm -hmm. We are all this thing, but if for a moment that you think you're it and the next guy isn't, you're an illusion. You cannot hold your brother in judgment and, and be the word, basically. Well, they say, you know, you, they that's say, what, that's what you said exactly. in the They say you can't, mm -hmm. you can't be the light and hold your, you mm -hmm. can't pretend to be the light and hold your brother in darkness. Right. It doesn't work. Uh, I think Jesus said, uh, love your enemies. He didn't say, love your friends and it's okay to hate the other guys. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and I think that's the, uh, again, and, to, and then going back to talking about frequency, that's how frequency, I think to me anyway, works is, is you, you put yourself in a certain mood, you stub your toe, you go through the whole day and you have a bad day. Yeah. You, you, you know, get beyond it you know, and you're okay, things and come to you. a lot of it's choice. I mean, mm -hmm. this is what my guides are teaching a lot through me now. I mean, they mm -hmm. say choice, 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 you know. I mean, if I go, what do I do about this? They say choice, mm -hmm. you know. And, and it's essentially, where are you choosing from? Or where am I choosing from? I have the right to stay in the low frequency. I have the right to, to, to complain. I mean, there's no reason to take that away from me. And sometimes mm -hmm. maybe that's what I need, yeah. but I don't have to do it. A lot of what we're responding, according to my guides, is based on what we think we're supposed to, how we're supposed to respond based, based on cultural paradigms and our own history. And they keep saying, you know, you're not your history. You're not, you're not what you've created. Mm -hmm. You know, you really are, you're much more than that. Mm -hmm. Once you know that you're more than that, you can begin to operate at that level. I mean, it all sounds, I, I guess, sort of out there until you begin to feel the energy of it. And mm -hmm. I think the important thing about the book, because they say this, is that the book operates on two levels. There's the printed word on the page, and then there's the frequency of the book, which works directly on the reader. Mm -hmm. And people reading the book are having this experience. And I'm hearing this from people all over the world. I mean, they're reading the book and they're feeling their energy shift. They're mm -hmm. feeling the vibrations. And these are people that perhaps were not at all familiar with energy work or this, but they're having this experience. So the guides are actually working with people to bring to themselves an awareness of their own divinity and mm -hmm. consequently the divinity of everybody else, which allows for change to happen that perhaps couldn't change otherwise. Mm -hmm. If you think that you're limited or you're stuck, you're stuck. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? If right. you think that 
you know, if I think that my job is the source of my income, I'm screwed the moment my job is gone. If mm -hmm. I know that it's, you know, the universe or God or whatever you want to call it, suddenly I have other recourse. The channel can change. I mean, mm -hmm. that's an old metaphysical teaching. That's not from my guides, although my guides have never disagreed with it. Mm -hmm. What, when I say I am the word, uh -huh. what is that? What, do you, what am I saying? It's a claim. When you say I am word is what they say. Mm -hmm. I am the word is the title. And I was surprised that they put a the in the title, <laughs> but they did it. And it wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, it was how it came out of my mouth. So mm -hmm. the book is actually the, tra my rule with the book was nothing could be changed. I couldn't change any of the words. Mm -hmm. Even if it didn't make sense, I had to leave it as is. Otherwise, it wouldn't be an authentic channeling. Um, so that was that. So I am word is essentially it's a claim of truth, according to them. It's how you self-identify. They work with an attunement to frequency, and the attunement is as follows. They have the reader say, I am word through my body, word I am word, which they say is actually bringing the frequency of the physical form to a place where it can hold that level of vibration. Um, I am word through my vibration or the auric field, which is usually something that people can feel. You feel your whole energy being shift. And then they say, I am word through my knowing of myself as word. And the knowing of myself is, 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 is how you self-identify. Am I self-identifying as the finite self, the physical self that's going to be dead in a number of years, is going to lose the apartment or have the this or lose the that or whatever, or am I identifying as the aspect of the creator that can be realized in form? Now, do I walk around the street knowing this all? I don't. I wish mm -hmm. I did. But you know what? I've had experiences with it now that are, 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 are life-changing. Um, but I think it's something to be experienced. And, and, you know, because I was raised, and I'm fairly cynical, mm -hmm. you know, in some ways still, and I'm not a good New Ager, mm -hmm. and I never was. So I needed to have some kind of experience that was tangible in order to begin to trust some of this. And that's what my guides give, which I think I'm fortunate, and the reader hopefully will benefit too. So what are some of the experiences that you've had with this? Well, with the book, it's not so much the book as the teaching. I and mean, the mm -hmm. book is a distillation of right. teaching. Um, but it's the ability, first of all, to feel frequency, mm -hmm. um, which readers begin to build as well, and really a shift in how you experience yourself in your world. Um, I mean, the work with the word, which is the work of conscious intention, is pretty simple and pretty direct. You set the intention, you support it with the frequency, and then you let it move. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, how has my life changed as a result of this work? I'm a, I'm a totally different person. Mm -hmm. um, that's the start. Well, I can say that, uh, you know, not, not only your book, but as a part of the journey that I'm on with this book, uh, for me, it's, it is life-changing. Yeah. Because, because uh, what it's about is it's about taking back your own personal connection to a higher power, you know, your own personal connection to your, your own higher self, your own self. And, and it's, it's not about being the victim anymore. It's a hard thing to let go of, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I still have places in my life where I'm quite attached to being the victim, mm -hmm. you know. I get something from it. And what my guides say again and again is, you know, everything in your life that you're getting, that you're creating, you get, you're, you're getting something back from it, mm -hmm. even if it's the, sh the, you know, the sucky stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I get a dividend. It pays me back something that I think I want or need, even on a subconscious level. Mm -hmm. um, but when I begin to let go of that and I begin to realize that I have choice in how I respond, that I don't have to respond out of the programming that I've known myself through, things begin to transform. Mm -hmm. So um, what do your guides say about uh, the year 2012? I mean, everybody <laughs> always asks that, I know. They but do. really two questions. Uh, first that and then also um, can you tell us more about your guides? Like, who are the people, you know, helping you You know, this? who are they? Conscious, conscious beings. Mm -hmm. They're higher teachers. My guides are teachers. Mm -hmm. I mean, they come from what they say is the Christ consciousness, and they're here to teach. Mm -hmm. They've used the term ascended masters. There's a lineage with that that I don't know a whole lot about. I'm not a theosophist. I don't really come from that background. But they really are a, a collective energy. They come through as a we. Mm -hmm. I used to be very invested in names when I was first starting to do this work, and then I actually got very unattached to it because there felt like there was a bit too much ego mm -hmm. going on, you know, with, you know, my guides are higher than your guides, right. and this is versus that. that. It's a kind of spiritual materialism. So I'm actually, I feel the energy, I take the dictation, 
Um, I have people that I've worked with and clients that have come to me that they can see them. You know, mm -hmm. I've done readings from the book and people have seen all the authors stand up behind mm -hmm. me and it's kind of fascinating. Really? That's interesting. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'd love to see the picture. You yeah. know, I'd love to see it. <laughs> um, the, the 2012 stuff, opportunity is what I hear. It's, mm -hmm. it's an opportunity to, tra to transform. If you, and they're saying if you take it, choose, choose, choose. They're saying choose, choose, choose. You have the right to. Mm -hmm. You have the right to. If you don't want it, if you don't want it, you don't have to. And then you reap your results. And then you reap your results. What do you choose? What do you want? What do you choose is what you want, what you know, and what you know. What you claim is your own is yours. What you claim is your own is, your, is yours. What do you want to claim for 2012? What do you want to claim for 2012? That is the choice here. That is the choice here. Question, please. Well, right. how do we claim a better world? Why do you want a better world? Why do you want, Why do you want a better world and what defines and what defines a better world? You don't even know what that means. You don't even know what that means. You have ideas. You have ideas. My world should look like this. My world should look like this. Her world should look like that. Her world should look like that. And that is based in fear. Mm -hmm. And that is based in fear until you know what you are. Until you know what you are. I am who I say I am. I am who I say I am in my truth. In my truth as I express my knowing. As I express my knowing, you will create what you always have. You will create what what you always have. This mm -hmm. is the opportunity to change. This is the opportunity to change and to grow into your magnificence and to grow into your magnificence as a world. As a world, you have the right to this. You have the right to this. It is here for you if you choose it. It is here for you if you choose it, but the world that you would create now. But the world that you would create now would be embedded and seeded, would be embedded and seeded with all the things you say you don't want, with all the things you say you don't want because what you believe you must have, because it is what you believe you must have. Do you understand this? Do you understand this? Yes, yes, I do. I do. It's it is about it's about belief. It's about your 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 comfort with who you are on on a much wider scale. You know, the more you want, the less you get. Would that be correct? And more and more and more and more and more. If you believe that you have to be well, the cosmos will well be. If you believe that you well, let me let me get it from them directly. Mm -hmm. from if you believe that you have to be well at the, co at the cost of somebody, of somebody else's well-being, you create the paradigm of separation. Mm -hmm. You create the paradigm of separation. I believe you have to be better than somebody else. If you, have to, if you believe you have to be better than somebody else in order to earn your worth, in order to earn your worth, you are supporting fear. You are supporting fear. That is a paradigm based in fear. That is a paradigm based in fear. Once you all identify as your true selves, once you all identify as your true selves, your life changes, your life changes changes and you rejoice in your brothers and you rejoice in your brothers because there is nothing else to do but rejoice in them because there is nothing else to do but rejoice in them and the fear that has kept you separate and the fear that has kept you separate vanishes vanishes because there is no purpose for it because there is no purpose for it you want the fear because it's a sense of safety you want the fear because it gives you a sense of safety and the belief that you have to be separate and the belief that you have to be separate and codify your experience and codify your experience what cements this is what cements this as long as you continue to do this as long as you continue to do this that is what you gain that is what you gain that is what you choose that is what you choose of the right so you have the right for a new existence for a new existence, but if you wish to be liberated from fear, but if you wish to be liberated from your fear, you have to choose it. You have to choose it. Period. Period. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for that. Sure. Um, so. I wish I had a specific question to ask your guides, but um, that answers it so well. I don't know what else to, to say. I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, it really is. Um, my thing is, personally, for me, is is not so much about me. It's it's always the, the 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 want to grab somebody else and shake them and say, you know, wake up, or don't do this. You know, and and uh, you know, for me, it's a process of learning to step back. You know, I think. Well, what it's, I mean, I'm trying to get it from them. Mm -hmm. You have to give everybody the right to be to be, to be what they choose. Shaking American people, shaking frightens people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. Choose to be yourself. Choose to be yourself. Choose to be in your worth. Choose to be in your worth. That lifts you up. That lifts you up and supports people coming to you at that level. And supports people coming to you at that level of recognition of recognition as you witness yourself and your worth. As you witness yourself in your worth, everybody else right to them. you give everybody else the right to do the same, and that is worthiness. And that is worthiness to be in congruence with your worth. To be in congruence with your worth brings worth, brings worth to others, to others. That is the start. That is the start. To hit somebody over the head, to hit somebody over the head affirms their stupidity, affirms their stupidity. They will do that to themselves. They will do that to themselves when they're good and ready, when they're good and ready. Do you understand mm -hmm. what they're saying? Do you understand? Yes. 
Yes, I do. I do. Uh, I don't even know what else to say. I mean, it's like that's a, that's beautiful. I mean, I think that the the you know one of the pages I wanted to talk about in the book was the difference between um, sort of self acceptance, uh, you know, for who you are, and and victimhood, uh -huh. you know, and the idea that uh, um, as soon as you have a, a realization that you know you, your relationship with others is only defined by you you know and it's what you say it is you know to me that that's that's your strength you know if that makes any sense you know um before we we're gonna have to wrap up here in a, in a few minutes uh -huh. but before we wrap up what i'd really like to do is um you know talk a little bit about how you began with this you know more like like a, you know yeah. i think it was in 87 you said you started yeah, in 87 I, I well something happened in 87 you know there was this thing going on called the harmonic convergence i heard people were going to be waking up Mm -hmm. You know, I hit a real wall in my own life. I was about a year out of Yale. I'd had this list of things I had to have achieved in the world to make me okay. By the time I was 25, I wanted to be produced off-Broadway. I wanted a Times Review. I wanted to be produced in London. I wanted to be published. I wanted to be in Interview Magazine so I could get a cute date. I wanted all these things. I got the whole list. My life was a train wreck. And I began to make some changes. And I went up to my roof on the night of this thing and I asked to be woken up. And I had an energy experience. Now, did I induce it through breath work? Did I, I mean, I, I don't know what happened, you know? Mm -hmm. I had people tell me years later that it sounded like a spontaneous Kundalini awakening. Somebody else has said it sounded like something called a soul awakening. But it was an experience of energy moving through the pit of my being and going up, 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 and out through the top of my head. That left me sort of paralyzed. And then I started seeing little lights around people, you know, little fireflies mm -hmm. around folks. And it was enough for me to keep me going. I mean, for me, it was an anchor at a time when my life made no sense at all, really no sense to me. And I just kept going through, really, it was like wading through mud for a few years because who I thought I was wasn't working anymore. And I didn't know who I was with this new conceit. You know, suddenly I was living in a world where perhaps there was a God. And that changes everything, you know? I mean, God, whatever you want to call it, you know? I mean, I was raised to believe that that was for stupid people, mm -hmm. you know? That was sort of my childhood, you know? Mm -hmm. It was sort of for other people. So, you know, the process for me was was one of integrating this into my life. I think I spent a number of years wanting to be anywhere else. And so I was meditating a lot and I was doing energy work and it was a lot of ways of sort of getting out. And mm -hmm. then I spent a lot of years just getting back in here. Mm -hmm. And what's happened now finally or beginning to happen is that I begin to you know, integrate my whole life. You know, I'm not walking around in a 300 pound body anymore, mm -hmm. you know, trying to pretend that I don't have a body. Or, and I'm not really, I'm not very airy-fairy for mm -hmm. somebody that does this kind of work, I mm -hmm. don't think, and I'm not knocking people that are, it's just not me. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have the experience of this work on an ongoing basis, I'm not smart enough to sit down, close my eyes, and dictate a 300 or 500 page book. Mm -hmm. And that's happened twice now. You know, and every time I show up to do a group, I mean, I'm the guy, and it's funny because in the beginning of the interview, we're saying, "What do you think?" or "What do you?" When you wrote, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking, "I don't know what I think." I'm the guy that sits in the chair. Mm -hmm. You know, my job is to show up and try to be present for this work, and I can try to interpret what they mean. I mean, if you ask them, you know, what do you say to the person who's you know losing their work and whatever? I'm sure they have a much wiser answer than I ever will mm -hmm. because I'm scared of that stuff. And they talk about it in the book. There's a whole chapter in the book. What's it called? Um, I forget what it's even called. Um, oh, trials. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't even. I mean, after the second page of dictation, they had to stop me because I was like, I don't want to bring this through. They're telling people it's good if they lose their job or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just spooked. They had to stop it and pull it back and really spoon feed it to me mm -hmm. because there's no issue that you can have or anybody else can have that I. I won't recognize. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the weird things that I do as an empath is I feel, you know, I've got one of these strange energy fields. Some doctor said maybe it's your mirror neurons are mm -hmm. highly developed. I don't know what mirror neurons are. Mm -hmm. All I know is I can feel. 
And you know, what that goes to show me, and again and again and again, is I'm not just the physical body, I'm made up of something else. And it's the same stuff that you're made up of, and everybody and everybody and everybody. And we stop self-identifying as the lower, we give ourselves the opportunity to reach for the higher and the universal. Mm -hmm. And that's where everything can change. For me, you know, the difference is between, like you said, I think you hit it on the nail when you said, I tried so, for so many years to escape. I think yeah. everybody does that. I've done that. Everybody uh -huh. has. And it's only when you realize that you are comfortable here right now in this moment, you know, with who you are, that you can grow. That you're actually, you don't, that you, when you realize there is no escape, you're not, you don't have to escape. You know, it's like there's, you know, you're always, it's not w whether you're ever going to always have problems or not. You will. But yeah. how are you going to deal with them? You know, my guides, the, the teaching of I am the word, they say, is a teaching of embodiment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a book about embodying as your higher self. What they've been teaching through me for the last year now is different. Mm -hmm. And they're, te they're calling it the teaching of incarnation, which is about being here now. Mm -hmm. And they use the claim, I know who I am, I know what I am, I know how I serve. And who I am is that aspect of, of the creator. And what I am is how I manifested in this form, how I serve or how any of us serves is how we are expressed mm -hmm. in our vibration. And they say that that can only happen in present time. So that'll call you back into your body and in present time quicker than anything else I've ever found. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the uh, one problem, especially with people who want to do good work, who want to serve, who want to like give something back to something, uh, is that they feel like they have to carry the weight of the world on their shoulders. They have to do X, Y, and Z. Well, that you know, sounds is that... like ego to me. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, there are people that are doing amazing work, but how one serves, and my guides have been very explicit about this when they give the teaching, it doesn't necessarily mean you're volunteering at the shelter down the street. Mm -hmm. It does mean, though, that you're being your most authentic self. Mm -hmm. And your most authentic self, if you're coming from your truth and your worth, and your awareness of your own worth, and consequently the awareness of everybody else's, you're going to be operating in a higher way. Mm -hmm. When you're operating to perpetuate your fear, which is essentially, and I don't always get this, but you know, I mean the belief that you have to have this, this, and this in order to be okay, and you're aspiring to this, this, and this to be okay, mm -hmm. or better than, what you're actually doing is you're reinforcing a paradigm that is based in comparison, and comparison and fear. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do that, you can do that. You have the choice, but you don't have to. Um, we're going to wrap up here shortly, but mm -hmm. before we do, i will just want to ask, do your guys have anything else that they would like to share with me or our audience at home before we wrap up? They're saying, who do you think you are? That's, what, that's the question you have, you have to ask yourself. Who do you think you are expressed as? Who do you think you, you are exp expressed as because you are choosing this? Because you are choosing this if you want to be a frightened self. If you want to be your frightened self, go be your frightened self. Go be your frightened self. She will have a terrible time. She will have a terrible time having that kind of experience. Having that kind of experience if you want to be in your worth. If you want to be in your worth, claim it. You are worthy. Claim that you are worthy of your love. If you want to be in love, in love, claim that you are in love. Claim that you are in love, in the vibration of love, in the vibration of love as you express yourself, as you express yourself, and that will bring love to you. And that will bring love to you. You are who you say you are. You are who you say you are, and you choose. And you choose based on what you know, based on what you know, if you need to know. If you need to know, don't look outside the self. Don't look outside the self, but honor the truth that you are but honor the truth that you are, that you are, and expressed as, and expressed as, and you will find your worth, and you will find your worth. You are here for a reason. You are here for a reason to be yourself, to be yourself, expressed in, expressed in fullness, and in love, and in love, and we honor you as you choose it. And we honor you as you choose it. We see you as you are. We see you as you are. We know who you are. We know who you are, and we wish you well, and we wish you well. Good night, and they're saying good night. Stop now. Stop now to me. That was the stop now, Paul. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Um, thank you, you know, for this. And we yeah. also thank Darla for being here, your, yes. your, your dog, because, you know, you, you guys were on the flight together and you just We're came on the town. flight and she's got bad detachment anxiety. So <laughs> thank you for both of us. Um, you know, this, this book, I Am the Word, um, is, is literally a book that can uh, transform your life. You know? And you have another book. What's the name of the new, the new book that's coming out? It's coming out in September. It's called The Book of Love and Creation. The Book of Love and Creation. Uh -huh. And I'm sure you can find it on Amazon when it comes out. You can find Amazon. this one on Amazon or at your local bookstore. Uh -huh. uh, it's selling very well, I understand. It's doing well. And, um, you know, really, this, this uh, is one that you need to get. You know, and, and Paul, uh, you are an absolutely beautiful individual and a beautiful soul. And 
uh, you know, the, the words that you bring through to us are, I think, ex extremely important in the times that we are in. And um, thank you, my friend, for coming out. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having yeah. me. And I'm your host, Lance Munguia. Um, we are another version of you. Um, and we wish you well, and we will talk to you soon. And again, thank you to Paul Selleck. Oh, wh where can people go? Um, your website? www.paulselig.com. P-A-U-L-S-E-L-I-G. A good person to check out at his website. And thank you and good night. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Darla. You did, <laughs> you did very well. <laughs> yes, you can.